Hello everybody! I'm Kelly Atchison at estampabove.com coming to you live from Menasha, Wisconsin. As we continue to celebrate my anniversary, I'm so excited about that. Um, I, For those of you that might be new tonight, I have been, let me change my glasses. I have been a Stampin' Up! demonstrator for 16 years today, March 19th. I'm pretty proud of that. It doesn't seem like it could be 16 years ago. That's crazy. Hi, Kelly, Connie, Becky. Welcome. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. So, what'd you guys do today? We went driving around. <laughs> yeah. Um, what else did we do? Um, we went to the cell phone store. There was nobody there. So we were distancing ourselves and we didn't touch anything. And Steve got a new phone. So he is frustrating himself pretty much all day trying to figure out how to make that baby work. Um, Trisha said she's been a demo for a total of two months. Good for you, Trisha. <laughs> Hi, Amy. Hi, Terry. Welcome. So yeah, and then the rest of the day I pretty much spent in here. And I was working. I, If you guys have emailed me, I haven't answered my emails today, so just know that. And I don't know that I'm going to get to them until maybe late tonight. I have kind of a lot on my plate. I have a blog hop that I need to get ready for tomorrow. <laughs> Pam wants to know what happened to my pigtails. <laughs> that is my favorite Snapchat filter. I absolutely love it. So for those of you that might know, I just put a little Snapchat video up on my page that said I would be live in 15 minutes and it was a cute little girl with pink um, glasses and little braided pigtails with pink bows and a funny little voice and I I, lo I love Snapchat. Haley calls me a Snapchat whore. <laughs> she does <laughs> and I am and I don't care. I'm proud of it. I love Snapchat. It's fun. It makes me giggle all the time. So um, anyways that was pretty much it. Haley came over um, after we got back and she designed another card for me using the ornate garden bundle and I can't wait to show you guys it's so so pretty like when she's like mom is this okay I'm like oh it's beautiful so that was really cool she just went home a few minutes ago it's pouring rain here we're supposed to get flooding um yeah just lots of crazy stuff and uh is the season right so um, I hope that you guys that are stuck at home are at least enjoying your time there I mean there's nothing we can do about this except sit at home but we can stamp and that's why I'm here right <laughs> Gilmore thank you Gilmore says she's so glad I'm doing this I'm excited to do it and like I said the stuff that I am showing you or stamping for you every day are swap cards that I've received. The really time consuming part of my job, if you want to call it that, it's fun, right, is designing. That can be very time consuming. So I'm just grabbing swap cards that, um, first of all, that I like. Secondly, and if you're giving me swap cards and I'm not showing them, don't be offended, please. Um, I usually have some type of a plan, some type of a plan in here as to why I'm choosing cards. And the card that I made yesterday, which was this one, this was Jay. She's part of my team of um, stampers. She's on my team. And I chose her card because it uses the Pleased as Punch Designer Series paper. And that's something that's only available until the end of March. So I just want to show you guys all the options with it and um, let you make an informed decision whether it's something you need to buy or not. And it is. <laughs> and you're welcome. <laughs> okay, so that's, that's how my mind works. It's like, what's going to work for what I want to pick to show people? It's not that I'm not loving the swap cards that I'm getting from those of you that are part of my swap world. So please don't ever be offended by that. It's just that this melded in with something that I was kind of doing a little run on so yeah 
Um, I'm going to pull you guys up on my laptop so that when we get ready to flip the phone around, I will have that going already. I'm just kind of watching everybody popping in. Um, Diana says, how are you, how are you doing? Um, I'm doing well. We're fine here. Um, I'm home most of the time anyway, so this really isn't much different for me. But we did go out for a drive today. And... It was a little creepy seeing the parking lot at the mall empty, right? That's just like, hmm, that's really, really weird. It's, um, there's not much traffic. People are staying home, so that's good. And, uh, like I said, we just went for a drive and, and, um, Steve picked up his new phone and then he's like, so what do you want to do now? And I'm like, well, let's just drive. Let's drive down College Avenue. And that's what we did. And we came the long way back home and just took a little drive. And that was about it. So not any different than having to go out to the grocery store, I suppose. But um, everybody's being really careful. Like at the phone store today, they said they're washing, wiping stuff down with disinfectant constantly. And like I said, when we went in there, we didn't touch anything. Um... Steve had a disinfectant wipe that he wiped his whole phone off and handed it to the girl. So everybody's being super careful about that. I need to scroll up. My phone isn't, it stopped scrolling so I can't see your messages. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Lots of them. I see Sharon and Sherry and Linda. Um, there you go. Linda went out for a Harley ride today. Oh my Lord, it was 80 degrees. I'm so jealous. Yeah, I was supposed to be in Arizona um, next Tuesday, and I was really looking forward to that and the warm weather, and that's not happening either. But I feel worse for my cousin and her husband because we were actually going to stay at their house in Phoenix while they went to Mexico on a vacation. And she actually said, hey, Kelly, get down here. Get down to Arizona. We're going on vacation. You guys can stay at our house for the whole week. Will you watch our dogs? And I'm like, you bet. They, got, they have really good black labs. And... So that's what we were going to do. We were just going to go enjoy a, a 10 days in Arizona and watch their dogs, which is no big deal. But now we're not going. And we're, they're not going to Mexico. And I'm sad. They were worried about, um, you know, the virus thing and getting locked out of the country if they close all the borders. I don't know if they've really done that yet. But yeah, anyways, I'm here to provide happiness, not doom and gloom. So we're going to get off that subject right now. I think that we all really need to stay positive and make the most of our situation. And I love having Haley here helping me. Um, and she is just having a blast. She loves the whole ornate garden bundle. So that's really cool. Yeah, Charlene says, as of tonight, she'll be working from home indefinitely. And you're having a blizzard in Colorado. I'm so sorry, Jennifer. Holy cow. Ugh. We got snow, though, yesterday. So, And now it's pour it's still pouring rain, and we're supposed to have flooding, so that's not cool. Francie says, happy SU anniversary. Thank you so much. I just never, ever could have imagined what this would bring to my life when I bought that starter kit, like... It's the best decision that I have ever probably made. Um, who gets to absolutely love their job every day? And don't get me wrong, there are some things that I don't love. <laughs> but we all have that, right? For the most part, I absolutely love my job. I love um, being able to share it with you and everybody else. So Brooke says, it's raining and snowing here. Brooke is from northern Wisconsin where I go bear hunting. She's one of my bear hunting buddies. And Deb just said 930,000 yet? No, no, no. Um, I am looking to hit my 920,000. Hold back, sister. <laughs> We're going to take this $10,000 at a time. And for those of you that might be new, I am um, reaching for a million dollars in career to date sales. This is my goal chain. And every time I hit the next 10000 for that goal, I will be taking a chain off and having a giveaway. So, um, yeah, we're at nine, we hit 910000 I don't know, the other day. I can't remember when I did it because, you know, I have a terrible memory. But um, we're climbing now to 920 And as soon as I hit that, I'll do that. Hi, Kelly McCauley. I miss your face. Um, so, anyways, lots of fun. Lots of fun to be able to share that with you. And I said I was going to find my live, and then I started jabbering again. So let me do that squirrel. That's how I roll. Yeah. Okay. 
I've got it here, but it won't let me click it. There it goes. Yeah, I hope we don't start having internet problems with everybody home on the internet, but they were at work on the internet anyways, right? So I don't think that should be a real big flood, except the kids that are home from school. I heard from Anna today and she said Molly is doing very well with being at home every day with her. Um, Anna works from home also, she's a real estate agent. So Stamping Up, Kathleen just said, how is Stampin' Up doing after the earthquake? They are doing fine. Thank you for asking. And um, they actually sent all of their employees home. We have our home office in Riverton, Utah, and then our manufacturing facility is in Kanab. Now, I don't know if anything happened in Kanab, but at the home office, they definitely felt it. And I was on a conference call for a couple hours yesterday with um, Shannon West, who is part of, I think, the executive team for Stampin' Up. And she said that her house was shaking like crazy. They're all working from home for the most part, too. And that's another thing I wanted to let you guys know about. So Stampin' Up has split their team for the distribution center in half. And um, they're working a split shift. So half are working during the day, half are working at night. So as you're placing your orders, you may see a little bit of a lag. They're not going to be getting them out the door as fast as they were because their teams are split up. So just know that they're doing everything they can to keep their employees safe and continue to give us great service, which is just a given from, I love my company. They're like, I think the best in the world. So that's really nice. But I wanted to share some mail with you today. Um, I have a beautiful card here from Debbie Bach. Look how pretty that is. It uses our um, Lily Impressions Designer Series paper and that Lily stamp set and dies that you can get right now. So this was um, sent to me. She's thanking me for videos. And you are very welcome, Debbie. Thank you so much for such a pretty card. And then I, oh, and look at, she decorated her envelope too. Way to go. Then I have a really fun card from Cheryl, and I'll probably kill your last name. Cheryl Conant, Conant from Kennewick, Washington. And look at this. How stinking cute is that? So she used the 3D thing, the, the um, punches or dies in a 3D fashion. Look at how her, yeah, isn't that cool with the tulips? I absolutely love this. This is the ladybug that she turned into a bee. What a great idea. I never even thought to do that. But let me show you how the card opens. It's got a magnetic closure here and it opens up Oops, hang on. Like this. Isn't that cute? Super, super cute. And she used the same paper here to punch out this tulip. So, very cool, Cheryl. I absolutely love this. And I love that she made a bee out of a ladybug, right? Oh my gosh, we're so creative. <laughs> Next, um, Maureen. I wanted to let you know I got your check in the mail today. I know you'll be watching. And, ooh, this is from Shelly Glassic. She is one of my team members. We do a monthly team swap for our team meeting. And if people aren't local that they can attend the meeting, they can mail their cards in and still swap. So I think this last time we had 14 um, swappers at our team meeting, so we got 14 different cards. And this is Shelly's card. Look how cute it is. Oh my gosh. She used the Bird Ballad Designer Series paper with the Welcome Easter. And I can't remember what this folder's called, but it's really pretty. You guys know which one I mean, right? <laughs> I can't remember. But isn't that just the sweetest little bunny? Yeah, this is perfect. I absolutely love it. Um, then... I got a card from Jody. Jody's on here. Jody, your card came. Look at how pretty that is. I love what she did with those rhinestones on the, the inside y thing of the flower. Isn't that pretty? This is our tropical oasis. And let's see, Jody sent me a little note. Oh, Jody won the Christmas rose bundle or earned it. She, I'm pretty sure she earned it. 
um, I think maybe Jody was part of our thousand dollar club. So what happens at my team meetings is I have um, all kinds of recognition and awards. But one of the awards is if you sell over a thousand dollars or buy, we don't judge. <laughs> Um, over a thousand dollars in a month, you get put into the thousand dollar club for a drawing, and I think Jody was the winner of that, and she chose the Christmas rose bundle, which I just happen to have right here, and there's also framelits. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous bundle of products, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. But Jody, thank you so much for this beautiful card. I love it. I'm going to set these back here behind me so I don't lose them. And then um, I want to award the prize from yesterday. So yesterday I said that I would be giving away a pack of the glitter enamel dots. If you recall, we used them on our tulip card. These are those pretty little glitter dots that I, I love these things. And I chose a winner from all the comments that are left. And Mary Lynn Cox, you are the winner of the Glitter Dots. So I will be mailing these out to you tomorrow. And then I decided because it's my 16 year anniversary that I was going to give another prize away today. I was going to give away a big bundle. Now, I have to tell you about this first. So I received two boxes in the mail. Two boxes. This box is from Cindy Lesko. And Cindy is a fellow demonstrator. We became friends online. Look at the stuff she sent me. She sent me one of these magnetic cups. Okay, you can throw your dyes in them. You get them at like Harbor Freight or someplace like that. She sent me this. She sent me um, a card kit. This was our celebration card kit, the kerchief shit kit. I almost said a bad word. <laughs> Oops. Um, the kerchief kit, and um, she sent me all this stuff and told me that I can use it to give away. How cool is that? So I will be giving this away. Oh, I have to show you the cute card she sent me. Look at how cute that is. Isn't that pretty? Yeah. So um, Cindy, so sweet. And she also gave me a little tip. To keep your sequins from all sticking together, just add a dash of non-smelling talcum powder, cornstarch, or I'm drawing a blank on the last thing, stupid memory. <laughs> I totally get it. <laughs> Anyways, put the lid on and shake it. So you can put just a little bit of talcum powder in your sequin container, shake it up a little bit, and that'll keep them from sticking. And I thought that tip was so fabulous. And uh, she just says, thank you for adding me to your tips and technique class. She's part of my technique club. I have an online, online technique club. And Cindy is part of that. I'm going to set this right back here and show you what else she sent me. Okay, here's a really good one. Yeah, venison jerky. Thank you very much. I love jerky. So this was perfect. And then look at this cute little Ghirardelli holder. Yeah, there's a Ghirardelli in here, and it just happens to be one of my favorite kinds. Dark chocolate sea salt caramel. And thank you, Mary Olson, for getting me addicted to these. Yeah, because I just so happen to always have a bag of them on my shelf. Oh, terrible. And I see Bev is here watching me. She's my off the via coach. Don't worry, Bev. I only have one like every other day. It's all good. <laughs> and then also Cindy sent me, along with the gifts to give away, Ladybug, Itty Bitty Christmas, Welcome Easter. And I'm so grateful. And I, I love giving things away. And I love that you guys... Um, she had extras of all of these and wanted to pay it forward. So how sweet is that? It's just so sweet. And then, as long as I'm showing you the things that I got in the mail, I got another box in the mail. This one came from Tracy. No, I'm sorry. Terry Mullinex. And Terry sent me this beautiful card. Yeah, it's gorgeous. And just um, a few treats as a thank you for all you do. She told me there's a couple stamp sets and some a couple extra things of ribbon. And she's donating them to me to give away. 
Isn't that sweet? So I have to show you the little goodies in here. Oh, and there was a little note on here that somebody gets credit for this, but I think it fell off. Oh, um, Julie DiMatteo. Look at how cute that is. Isn't that adorable? What an adorable thing to do with our little mini acetate box. Yeah, it's just stinking sweet. She also sent me this. How cute is that? Yeah, it's chocolate. I will eat it. <laughs> and then these cute little boxes. Look at that. And these are sweet tarts. I opened them. Little sweet tarts fit in them. Aren't they cute? I've got this one. It's got a magnetic closure on the front. And then this one. Super, super cute. And then, guess who's going to be getting some ribbon? You guys. That's who. Look at all this ribbon. It's crazy. I think I'll throw one in with this thing when I get a ready to announce it, too. Get a ready. Oh, can't hardly talk. Two ladybug sets, you guys. Two ladybug sets. So, all kinds of goodness happening here. Uh, let me put all of this in the back. And I'll keep my little sucker thing handy. <laughs> I might need to eat it. Okay, other prize. I decided, did I do this already? I don't think I did. Christmas rose. I've got dyes that were donated by Cindy Lesko and the Christmas rose stamp set. Now you're thinking, Kelly, it is March. What are you doing with Christmas? Oh my gosh, you guys. This is so beautiful. You can go on my blog and find some ideas using this Christmas rose set that has nothing to do with Christmas. I made a whole bunch of birthday cards out of it. I made a whole bunch of thank you cards. The dies are absolutely gorgeous. Plus, you can still get the Christmas Time is Here specialty designer series paper in our store. The item code is 152154. It is still available. The winner of this, I chose a winner from everybody who watched the video yesterday, is Nancy Voles. Nancy, you're the winner. Congratulations, and thank you to everybody who's coming here to play with us. All right, I'm going to put that, where are those, um, here's, uh, here's Mary Lynn's prize. I'm going to put these right back here so I remember to package them up and get them in the mail. Oh, and you're going to get this ribbon too. That's for Nancy Bowles because it's gonna it's gonna go along with the Christmas time is here, um, Christmas rose bundle. How about that? Oh yeah, it. And um, who just said that? Who just said somebody? I hate to touch my. Diana just said it's a beautiful year-round stamp set. It really, really is. It is absolutely gorgeous, and can be used for anything. So, next, what are we drawing for tomorrow? Well, hmm. I think that if you guys are sharing my video, I certainly appreciate that. The more people you sh the more people that share it, the bigger audience I get. And I am thinking that since we got all this loot in the mail, we, yes, all of us. Um, I had chosen the Hello Cupcake stamp set to give away in the drawing tomorrow. I think I'll add two drawings and do the little ladybug too. So, hello cupcake. This was on one of our celebration items, I think from last year. It is absolutely stinking adorable. Little ladybug, don't forget, you can still buy the dies for this. You look for, what are they called? I can't remember. Here we go, I got it, right here. Little ladybug, ladybug dies. Ooh, that's original. <laughs> That was kind of snarky, wasn't it? <laughs> Little ladybug dies. You can still get the dies for this. So whoever wins this tomorrow, if you don't have the dies, I'm sure you'll probably want to get them. Anywho, this is what we're drawing for tomorrow. Two stamp sets, two winners. All right. Jean says she hates being stuck in the house, but watching crafting videos or live streams really helps pass the time. Right? That's what I thought thought that was a great idea. Okay, now you know yesterday we made this card and I said that I had another card to make but I didn't have time because I had to do that video conference thing which by the way went really well and um, I am going to flip my camera around. Hang on you're not you're not scrolling again. I'm going to flip my camera around and we're going to get busy. 
And don't forget, give me a thumbs up, hit that like button, that's helpful in the whole Facebook algorithm thing, and share. You can click the share button right now. Share this video. Spread the joy. <laughs> oh, I gotta plug in. Brr. Mind your business, Kelly. <laughs> right? Holy cow. Okay. Um, yeah, Patricia says it's nice to see a friendly face among all the depressing news, and you're welcome. And I totally get what you're saying because everybody seems so glum, right? And we could go on and on and on and talk about what's going on in the world. I'm not ignoring it or putting my head in the sand to think it's not there. I just choose, there's nothing I can do about it. So I choose to make the most of it and I choose to be upbeat and positive and just push that away from my thoughts while I'm doing that. So it's a choice to be happy, right? We all know people who are not happy. They need to watch my videos <laughs> so they can be more happy. But um, I'm glad that I can be a happy person because I think that life would be pretty dismal without a lot of laughter and making fun of myself and um, getting that to share that with you guys. I love that I can do this. Okay, we are flipping. Close your eyes if you get motion sickness. Ooh, I should have shown you guys. I can show you my desk over there. Look, it's kind of cleaned up. <gasps> Look, you can see white space. Holy cow. That's where Haley was working today. Yeah. And I do have it kind of cleaned up. So, yay me. Some days are better than others. Um, I have to work on a blog hop tonight. And that's due for tomorrow. Hang on, I gotta get my cord up there. That's due for tomorrow, and then um, I think I have Kathy coming over tomorrow to help me get my Welcome Easter kit put together. I, I think I'm gonna get it out in the mail ahead of schedule. That never happens, so pretty excited about that. Sorry about the glare, I hate that. This glares back at you like crazy. So, yesterday we used Timeless Tulips, right? And I had another card using Timeless Tulips that I wanted to share with you. So that's what we're going to make today. And I'm going to bring in my piercing mat. Let's move this so it's not glaring. And then all my bits and pieces. And I got my little cheat sheet so I can tell you all the dimensions. Now, with these daily Facebook Lives that I'm doing, I am not taking a tremendous amount of time to go in and post all the dimensions and all that stuff. That is a very time consuming thing to do. So if you want dimensions, you can write them down as I'm doing them, or you can rewatch the video once we're done being live. You can fast forward and go back and forth to see and listen again to the dimensions that you need. But I just want to let you know that that something has to give, right? <laughs> because, yeah. Um, okay, here's what we got. Let's see if I can do this right. I have... Oh, here's my card base. I've got a crumb cake card base here. This is four and a quarter by 11, and I've scored it at five and a half. Oh, and I need to cut. And I think Haley took my paper cutter. Hang on, I gotta find a paper cutter. Did she take it? Yeah, she, oh, no, she didn't. Here it is. Don't worry, she left it. She took home um, the swap cards she's gonna make that are due tomorrow, so she knows I need them back tomorrow. So this piece that is 11 by five and a half, ooh, I kind of messed that up. Let's see, I am going to cut this off at six and three quarters now. After I've scored it at five and a half, I'm gonna cut it off at six and three quarters. Yep, I think that's right. So boom, that's gone. Now, you can use this for the rest of your layers, but I already have them cut, but I would definitely recommend that you do that. Okay, so here's what our card looks like now. But then I've got all these pieces. Let's get this out of here. I've got, this is a fun fold and it's spectacular. And then I will show you the one that I got in a swap and tell you all about its designer because she's amazing. So then I've got two pieces of crumb cake. And the smaller one is one and three eighths by four and a quarter. Two of those, one and three eighths by four and a quarter. 
these two bigger pieces are one and three quarters by four and a quarter. And then I've got some of our beautiful Please Dis Punch Designer Series paper. And we're gonna be using the green side. I've got two of these at one and a quarter by four and an eighth. And that's, hang on. Yep, that's right. One and a quarter by four and an eighth, two pieces. These are just an eighth inch smaller. These two pieces are one and five eighths by four and an eighth. And once you once I get this together, it'll make a lot of sense. Then Oh, where did my, here's my, this is tricky when you're using window sheets. So I've got a window sheet here. This is um, a thick transparency. We actually sell these. You got, I think, two of them in 12 by 12. So um, this is a window sheet. When you're in the store looking for these products, you can just type in window sheet and do a search. It's going to pop right up. This piece is, uh, I can't read my writing four and a quarter by five and three eighths. Okay, and then I have this, and I think this is just, a, it is, it's a scrap. All right, now I am going to take my stitched shape framelits. I know mine are a mess, and sometimes that makes people really crazy. Like, they're like, oh my Lord, I don't know how you can work like that. Well, so, not everybody can be really organized and I really don't care. Um, I'm all about quick. <laughs> like I don't have time to put these all back together. But I do, anytime I cut extras and I don't use them, I put them in the back of these dies so that I maybe can just grab them next time and I don't have to cut one. So look at all those extras. I must have had a serious mistake. <laughs> Anyhow, I'm going to take the second largest oval, this is the biggest one. I'm gonna take the next size down. I'm gonna set those aside. And you're going to die cut an oval out of your crumb cake scrap. The next thing you're gonna do is after you've die cut, you're gonna put that oval in your basket weave embossing folder and you're going to emboss it and when you do all that it's going to end up looking just like this okay we've still got the stitching around the edges the stitching has kind of been smashed a little bit so if you want to you could take your pokey tool and just poke dots around the outside edge i'll show you one like that in a minute all right let me put this back okay let's see if i can do this i haven't actually made this card yet so this could be a complete colossal disaster, but I know you guys are with me, right? <laughs> like, you're not gonna go, oh my Lord, what is she thinking? Uh, maybe you will, but you'll say it not so I can see it. <laughs> All right, we have got Rococo Rose, So Saffron, and Highland Heather. So we're gonna stamp, I'm gonna get out my Stampin' Chamois. This is what I use to clean my stamps. I've got my big, um, tulip here from the Timeless Tulips stamp set and I'm going to stamp that in the Rococo Rose. My gosh, that just looks delicious every single time I do it. Then we're going to grab our So Saffron and we're going to stamp that and if anybody's yelling at me right now, Kelly, you've got them too close because your punch is going to mess them up. Hang tight. Sometimes I do things like that, but this time I, I know what I'm doing this time. <laughs> Not always, so I appreciate your help. So don't ever stop telling me, Kelly, you're doing something wrong. But look at those colors. That's Highland Heather. So, so pretty. Now what I'm going to do is I stamped over here on the left side of the paper, and I did that on purpose because I know that my leaf is to the left on the back side of my punch, right? Let me get these out of the way so I don't drop my paper in it. But now I can throw this in here. And yes, if I would have started punching over here, I'm gonna ruin my yellow tulip. But because I'm starting on the left side, that's right, pretty smart thinking. And I just wanna get this lined up right. There we go. And now when we come to this one, we don't care that we're punching out a blank space where that tulip was, right? Who else thinks like that when you're stamping things that have a coordinating punch that has more than one um, image like this? 
Yeah, I'm, I'm, I usually try to think that way. There we go. Okay, we have three amazingly gorgeous tulips. All right, now what I'm going to do with those, I'm going to find my baby dimensionals, my mini dimensionals, and I'm going to put a couple on the top back of each one of these tulips. Oh, and I have to, I don't think I said, I am actually making D Esplana's swap card. So D, if you are watching, your swap card is simply amazing. And I will show it to everybody because I'm using different colors for my card base and my designer series paper. So I'll show you hers too. Don't worry. Oh, and then we need, oh, I need pear pizzazz. I'm going to grab some pear pizzazz. And then I need to stamp, oh my lord, where is it? I don't think I have it mounted yet. I didn't count on that part. Here it is right here. This really like chubby little swirly leaf is the one that matches the punch. So I'm going to just grab this and take it off of there. I don't ever set stamps except onto another block where they won't fall off. Like I won't just set it over on the table. Because if you happen to set something on it, it's stuck to the bottom and you don't know it. And I've lost stuff like that until I go to use something again and, oh, there it is. And I'm like, oh, yeah, well, of course you dingbat. Why'd you do that? So I try to be really careful with stuff like that. I don't care what my dyes look like in the package, but I am pretty diligent about that. Okay, so now I need to look at this punch to see which way I need to stamp this leaf. And, okay, I need it to be more like this. Okay, good to know. So I'm going to stamp some leaves. Now, you do have to leave space for these, right? Because you've got that big tulip. And it'd probably be a good idea to cut a sliver of paper. Let's do that. That's going to be a really good idea. Hang on. I just happen to have a little baby guillotine cutter. Who has the baby guillotine cutter? I love this thing. I'm using it more and more. It took me a little while to remember that I have it, but I'm using it like all the time. It's perfect to keep right on my tabletop. And you can only get this if you join my team of discount shoppers, or if you want to build a business, you can do that. But you can be a discount shopper. If you order that discount shopper kit from me, you get this and some other stuff too, but this comes with it for free. It's a pretty, pretty sweet little deal. It's the best deal of the year, actually. So here comes one leaf. That's beautiful. I need three of them. So I'm going to do a little bit more stamping here. Where'd my green go? Right here. I'm going to do another one right here. And then I think I will bring this in and I'll do one right here. There we go. Now I'm going to waste a whole bunch of cardstock here, right? That's not smart. I should have cut a sliver off, but I guess it is what it is. I'll think about that next time. I was just telling you, oh, do that, and then I didn't do it anyways. And here is our third little leaf. Yeah. Char says, stamp from the left. That's right. And Claudia loves her mini guillotine paper trimmer. I do too. It's just the cutest little thing. And it doesn't take up a lot of space on my desk, so I can keep it really handy. Okay, here's all three of our leaves. Let me get this mess out of here. It's one thing I don't like is having all the mess all over the place. Um, Where did my other tulip go? Do you guys see the other tulip? Here it is. Okay, so we got three tulips, three leaves. Let me throw this stuff away. And, oh yeah, <laughs> Cynthia said, do the leaf like the tulip and start from the right side. I can't think that far ahead. You are a genius. <laughs> of course, right? Duh. Yeah, that's a really good tip though. Thank you, I appreciate it. Okay, next what we're going to do here is we're going to start assembling our card. So when I use window sheets or acetate, I like to use my tape runner. And we're going to bring in that window sheet and we're going to put it 
right here. Okay, so it doesn't quite go to the top and the bottom of our layer. So I just wanted to do a little fit of that. I'm gonna run some snail adhesive across this layer. I'm gonna kind of hold this up so that I can get it lined up good. Okay, snail, and I'm just doing it on that panel. And we're going to put that right here at, meh, did I get it lined up? I guess I did, oh no I didn't, hang on, I might have to redo this one. This is why I like glue, right, because you can reposition a little bit easier, you have some wiggle room, but there we go. Okay, but I, I like to use, uh, it's hard to use glue on something that is non-porous, like the window sheet, so that's why I'm using this. Okay, then... We've got this going on, and I don't like that you can see that that's a little um, uneven. So I'm going to bring this layer in here, and I'm going to cover that up so that it looks nice and neat on the inside also. And now I can bring out my glue and just add some glue to the cardstock and then to the cardstock. So I'm just going to cover that up. Now, you want to make sure before you leave this that you're your fold is not being um, hindered by this layer of cardstock. So now we have this, okay? Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this and cover up the bottom. And the best way to do that is, yep, to line this piece, this is your bigger one and three quarter by four and a quarter, is to line this up here. I'm going to take my snail, I'm gonna line that piece up with the bottom of my card. Make sure that's even. Okay, there we go. Push that closed, and now we have this. And then of course we need to cover that up, right? So we'll do a little bit more. I don't think, oh yeah, it does stick to here, good. Okay, so a little snail here. And again, I'm gonna pick this up so that it's all lined up nicely, kind of like stacking it, I like to do that. Look at that. So now we have a peek through window. Super cool, right? Oh, um, one thing I should have done is I should have put my little, um, my designer paper in my basket on first, but you'll see me do this and you'll understand what I'm talking about. Oh, look how pretty that's gonna be. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put my basket on here. I should have not put this part on yet, but it's okay. And let's see, yep, D used some dimensionals, so let me grab some, well, first of all, I'm gonna trim a little bit off the top of this. That's that's my plan here. That's what D did, and that's what I wanna do too. So I'm just gonna kinda hold it in place. And does anybody see my scissors? Oh, I think I gave them to Healy today. Now what I'm gonna do, ah, hang on, I lost my scissors. Any scissors over here? Yeah, I think she took both pairs home with her. So, that's interesting. I have these big cowabunga ones, and I will use them. Don't worry, I will use them. <laughs> okay, here we go. This will work just fine. I usually like to use my paper snips, but there we go. I just trimmed that edge off, okay? So that's what I'm doing. Now I'm going to adhere this. This is that piece that's just an eighth of an inch smaller. This one is the big one. It's one and five eighths by four and an eighth. So you just get a teeny weeny little border around this so you can see your crumb cake. Look how pretty that is. It's striking, isn't it? And So Donna says, can also put that on the window sheet before you adhere the window sheet to the card. I'm not quite sure I missed something there. I don't know exactly what that means. But you do whatever you do, you need to do to make this happen. I'm just going to show you how I would put it together. And I'll show you all the mistakes that I maybe would make so that you don't make them. <laughs> I'm, really, I'm really good at that part. Yeah. Okay, here comes... Oh, you know what? I just kind of blew it a little bit, but it'll be okay. 
See, this is what happens when I don't make the card first. We're gonna take all these little leaves. Oh, you know what we need? We need some stems too. So let me grab this scrap of Whisper White and I'm gonna stamp up, I need three stems. Here we go. Here is, well, I'm gonna do it this way. One, two, and three. So we need three stems. Completely forgot about that. Boy, I wish I had my snips here now. And I'm just gonna cut those out. They're just straight little lines, easy peasy. If you wanted to, you could even use a piece of um, pear pizzazz. I almost said certainly celery. Can you believe that? You could use a piece of pear pizzazz cardstock for this part and just trim it in your cutter. But I like the stamped image look, and this is how Dee made hers. So this is what I'm doing, too. Okay. And these are just going to be whoops, clipped. Bloop. There we go. And then, that smart girl, I'm going to bring in the light granny apple green. And I'm going to color the back. Let's see if that works. We'll see. Okay, now. Here's what I was saying. I should have tucked my leaves and my stems in here first, but I didn't. So I am going to do it now. You guys will do a better job of this than I did. Okay. Let's see what else we got going on here. Oh, yeah. Look at I almost completely blew it. We need some more of these. Um, here we go. You need two of each tulip. There's one. That's the Rococo Rose. This is the So Saffron and the Highland Heather. Two of each. <clears throat> I'm going to punch these out again. But we're going to work out tonight, aren't we? Oftentimes, this is a perfect example of why I make the whole card ahead of time. <laughs> I can be a lot more useful to you in showing you how to make something if I know what I'm doing, right? And that's why sometimes I say, oh, I'm going to be creating on the fly or whatever, designing on the fly. That's why that's so tricky because you don't really know sometimes if things are really going to work. And, <clears throat> excuse me, you can tell by all the steps that I'm doing kind of out of order that I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm going to take the dimensionals off. I'm so glad you guys aren't stamping along with me. Are you stamping along with me and goofing this whole thing up? I hope not. But I know you'll understand because a lot of this stuff is hit and miss, right? <clears throat> Okay, phew, golly. All right, now we're gonna glue these together. And I am going to, I think I just lost a stem. Oh no, I didn't. I'm going to put my stem in between them right away. So this is my yellow one. And let's just put a little bit of snail in there to hold this in place. I want to make sure, this is going to go on the front of our card, so I want to make sure, yep, I've got enough space here to do that. Here, let me get my hair out of there. How about that? <laughs> yeah. And here's our other yellow one. A little glue in here. So you want to glue your tulips together. And I love the way that Dee really paid attention to all of these type of details because if she wouldn't have, it'd be kind of ugly when we open the card. And um, I thought, oh, there's a girl right after my heart because I get kind of fussy about stuff like that too. And Dee has either been doing that for a long time or she's been watching me <laughs> because I don't like when the inside is all messy either. A little bit of glue, 
Here comes our Rococo Rose Tulip. I'm going to kind of pick it up and make sure that the edges are all even. Look at, look at how fun that is. Ah, yeah. little singing from Kelly today. Okay, next is the Highland Heather one. And I'm going to pull that stem out of here. Lay that down. And now the one thing that you're going to have to pay attention to is which side you keep face up. Because if you do these the wrong way, you're going to see this side of the stem on the front instead of this side, which is the stamped side. So I just thought of that, right? Pretty smart this time. <laughs> Some things. Okay, now we're going to bring these in here. I have to do those mini dimensionals again. Who sees my, where'd they go? Mini dimensionals are now missing. I have no idea. Oh, here they are. I don't even, oh, I might have enough left here. You guys save these edges, right? Because you can cut those apart and use those. So on the back, I'm going to put my baby dimensionals up at the top, two of them on each flower. And this is the front, that's the back of the stem. So I'm going to turn that over. I almost messed that up. Do this at this and same thing this is the back of my tulip do this and this there we go and now like I said I, I, oh you know what oh she did the same thing to the backs of her leaves so let's do that boy D was thorough I love it I'm like how did she handle that okay so we're gonna just we're just gonna color these whoops don't crinkle yours up like that. There we go. You could also dip these in your ink pad. That would work. Stop crinkling the leaves. <laughs> Might be a better idea just to color the back of your scrap that you're stamping on. That would be easier than doing these individually, but whatever, right? Make it work. Okay, here it comes. Oh, I need to do my top part here. So let's get a little bit of glue on this. This is the smaller designer series paper layer. This is uh, la, 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 one and a quarter by four and an eighth. <laughs> oh my lord! Is somebody punking me here? Okay, there we go. All right, did that right. And now we're going to come in with your flowers first. And I'm going to tuck my little stem right down in here. Oh, this one goes way up here. Okay, just like that. So it'll stay in there. <laughs> I will make it stay. Okay, here comes our next one. And we're gonna pull this down just a little bit. Ooh, that's getting really close. Let's make sure. Oh, you can see the dimensional. I don't like that. Hang on. It tore a little bit, but it's not going to matter. Nobody's going to see that. I need to put my dimensional up a little bit higher. Oops. All right, you guys. Holy cow. You ever do this? This is like, oh, rough night, Kelly. Yeah, it's okay. I know I'm among friends. You guys are not going to be like, oh, my Lord, she's just a complete mess. And I am. It's okay. We were doing so well. I just don't want those dimensionals to be seen on the inside of the card. That's important to me. Okay, so I got one there. And now I think I'm going to move this one up. I'm only going to put one on these side ones. That's what I'm going to do. I didn't push these down very hard, so that was pretty smart. It wasn't smart. It was just a fluke. <laughs> Who am I kidding? There we go. Look at how pretty. Okay, next. We have to tuck our leaves in here. And... I am going to, yep, I'm just going to take, put a little glue. You should have done this before, right? The ideal thing to do would be do this before I did all of this. And now I'm, I'm also capturing the stem with my leaf glue. Okay, there's always a way to fix things. And then I'm going to put this one in here. Oh, I might have got a little bit too much glue on there. Hang on, that's what your jeans are for. <laughs> I'm going to put this 
right in here. There we go. And then, oh, here's our other one. I think I will do this one right over here. And I'm just going to, yep, that's exactly what Dee did. She made it go the opposite. Right over here on the other side, kind of. Look at how pretty that is. Okay. Now, we're going to take some of our scallop linen ribbon. And I'm using this because I'm using Rococo Rose, and this is Rococo Rose. And I just thought this would work really pretty. D used that white, really skinny ribbon that we can't get right now, the seam binding. I think it's out of stock. I'm not sure anymore, but... I know it was out of stock. We couldn't get it, but it's the white that you can change to be any color you want. So I'm going to take this, and I know Haley had mini blue dots earlier. Let's see if I can find some. Yep. I have two rolls under there in my little magic basket. Here comes... This is going to go right on our little pot, right? Okay, get that out of there. Then we've got an inside here, and you could put the Easter greeting in here, okay? Um, I think I've already got some Easter cards. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this into a get well card, or you could make it a happy birthday card for somebody who has a birthday, or we've got happy Mother's Day. Ooh, maybe I should make it my Mother's Day. No, I think I already have a Mother's Day card. Um, I'm going to make... The get well soon that's what I'm gonna do with mine again I'm just gonna peel this off but I'm sticking it over here to another stamp so I don't lose it don't lose stamps it'll make you cry there should be no crying and stamping ever <laughs> okay I'm gonna go with the um, Rococo Rose and I'm going to put that right let's see if I can get it straight right there oh that looks pretty good so now I'm winning and that's going to go right in here. Let's see how it looks. Oh, it does look good, doesn't it? Oh, I know. Oh, look at I just smudged. I had ink on my hand. Okay, so we have two chances here. Let's see if I can get it straight again. Let's do this. Yep, okay. The other thing I wanted to look at is how far down at the bottom. I think I can do one of these little baby tulips right down here and I smudged it again but I covered it with the baby tulip <laughs> see see the inside how much nicer that looks than it would look if you didn't do that yeah it looks like you really put a lot of thought into this and D did no doubt about that and just think everybody that swapped on our team swap got one of these beauties well I'll show you hers hers is gorgeous Oh my goodness. That was a labor of love, you guys. <laughs> okay, then I'm going to come in here and I'm going to, what color did we use last? I must have cleaned it. I'm going to do a Rococo Rose right here. I'm kind of tilting it a little bit. I'm going to peel off this leaf and bring back my pear possess. Oh, I need a stem. Where did that stem stamp go? And I only have one out here. I stuck the words to it. That's what happened. I'll stick that someplace else. All right. There we go. And then here comes a leaf. Just like that. Oh, that is so pretty, isn't it? Look at how pretty that is. Oh, it just so happens that this Get Well is way under there. It doesn't have to be. It can be right in the middle of the page. So do you want me to show you Dee's card? Let me get some of this. Oh, wait, we're not done yet. Sorry. We have to do this. Continue with the finishing. This card is so finished on the inside and outside. That's why we cut two of these, is to bring this right in here. Like I said, holy cow, Dee, you did just an amazing job with this card. And we'll put the smaller of the two up here. That's why we cut two designer series paper. If you don't want to do this part, you don't have to. But holy cow, doesn't that look nice, right? And now we have a peek through window card. Hello. No, <laughs> that was weird. Okay, 
Do you, do you guys ever do weird things like that when you're sitting alone in your stamp room and you're like, oh my goodness, aren't you just beautiful? Yep, I do that. Here is Dee's card. Let's give this woman a round of applause. This is that, what is that paper called? I have a ton of it. I've used it many times and I have it right here. Pressed petals. She used the scripty um, layer from the pressed petals. Let me see if I can find some here. I don't know if I have any. I might have used all of that in this particular pack. Hang on. Here it is. She used this one from the pressed petals with that beautiful scripty writing. And like I said, that little um, quarter inch seam binding that's white. And she colored it Rococo Rose to match. And hers is Happy Easter. But see the inside of hers, how nice that looks? Yeah, it really does look nice. Actually, it looks like she sponged her leaves. You could do that too. I just used the marker. It looks like she sponged hers. But that works good too. So, so pretty, right? I was so excited. I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't wait to show this to you guys because it's so pretty. Okay. Yeah, Charlene said this is a wonderful card, and I would love to receive it if I were feeling poorly or in the hospital. Um, yeah, I totally agree with you. And you know what? That reminds me. One of my followers, I need to give a shout-out to Lindsay from England. She has the coronavirus. I spoke with her online last night, and she is recovering from the coronavirus and I just felt so bad for her. She's got to be uh, in quarantine for uh, two weeks, and then she's quarantined for two weeks, and then self-quarantined for like 12 more weeks. So who would want to deal with that? That's horrible. So big hugs, big prayers going out to you, Lindsay, um, that you fully recover and... Yeah, get your, she said she's getting her stamping stuff out. That's what she's doing because that's what she can do right now. So, yeah, it's a good way to pass your time. Okay, now, if you guys are up for it, I have one more little project I would like to show you. Who's in? Should I quit now while I'm kind of ahead? Or should I see if I can make a mess out of something else? What do you guys think? Oh, thank you. Thank you guys for the prayers. Let me know. One more little project or do we need to be done? You guys got to run. What's happening? Oh, I love all the hearts coming in. Thank you so much. What are you guys drinking tonight? I have my same old, same old. You know, I told you I'm a creature of habit. Strawberry lemonade. Love it. Uh, nobody's telling me what to do. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm, because tomorrow I'm going to use something besides the tulip, so I want to get some things done here. This is a really quick and easy little project, so let me show you. Here's my little, i got to move my little cheat sheet. Here's my new cheat sheet. Ooh, something just fell over on the other side of my room. <laughs> oh. All right. So, another project from my team meeting on Sunday. This is a piece of crumb cake, and I'm doing it to match the card. Oh, did I forget to? Nope, I'm good. I'm doing it to match the card, so I've got a piece of crumb cake. This is three by six and a quarter, and we are going to score this at three and three and a quarter. So, we've got it scored here. And here, just like that. Okay? Easy peasy, little like a little book. Next thing I'm gonna do is where'd my ribbon go? Does anybody see it? What did I do with my roll of ribbon? Oh this oh here it is. I'm like, well this could end everything right now. Alright, who was wondering something? I see somebody was Oh no, Linda's almost out of coffee. Um, okay, so you need about 12 inches of ribbon. So I'm just going to measure this so you guys know that I'm that number is correct. 12 inches of ribbon. And again, I'm using that um, scalloped linen 
ribbon. I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it on my little book just like this, okay? And you could use some snail adhesive to hold it in place or whatever you need to do, but I'm just going to use tape because I've got it right here and I want to use it up. <laughs> yeah, if you've ever heard my tape story, you understand why. That's something for another day. And here's some more tape. There we go. Okay. So here's our little book. Then I'm going to take this piece and just like Dee did on her card, my team member Bonnie did this on her little treat favor. It's all finished, you know, you want things to look finished. And then what I decided to do is take some of the Pleased as Punch Designer Series paper and I'm going to, oh, by the way, this piece is three by, th uh, oh, I don't know, two and seven eighths by two and seven eighths. I think so. Let me measure. I forgot to write that down, you guys. So hang tight. Yep, two and seven eighths by two and seven eighths. You could use any of the paper you wanted, any color you want. And then I grabbed a piece of our vellum cardstock. This stuff is fabulous, you guys. Um, it's always nice to have vellum in your supplies. If you don't have any, I highly recommend you add this to your order next time because you can't find this in the stores. It's a nice, thick vellum. And I die cut the stitched shapes circle out of vellum. And I am going to use that and then I also have a Rococo Rose Tulip that I stamped and punched. And then I must have lost my mind because I don't have any leaves, but I'm going to get some. So here's the scrap. And now when you want to do something like this, I'm going to punch out a leaf out of our designer series paper. I need to then turn it over. Whoops. I need to then turn my paper over to punch out a leaf so that they're uh, symmetrical, the word I'm looking for. I want one on one side and one on the other. Okay, so you need them to be opposites. So there's a little tip for you to do that. Now I'm gonna take a little bit of glue and add it to the bottom of each of these stems. There we go, that's probably too much glue. I'm just going to add this right down here and a little bit more right there. Make sure I'm doing this right. Then I'm going to show you Bonnie's little treat favor, Bonnie Lesperance. She's the team member that made this for us. It was all demonstrated. So neat thing about being on my team is that when we have a team meeting, not only can you swap with us if you're not nearby and can attend in person, but you can also attend the meeting virtually because I do a Facebook Live from the team meeting. So we have like a hour and a half Facebook Live for the whole meeting so you don't miss anything. So I put some dimensionals on there. Here comes my tulip. I love the softness of the vellum in the back there. And now I'm just going to add some glue under where the tulip is going to hide it and put that right here. Now, using the green, my leaves really get lost in there, don't they? I don't think I like that. I didn't think about that aspect. Watch this. <laughs> okay, so I think what I would be better off doing is where's some white cardstock? Um, hang on, I got some right here. I think what I would have been better off doing is stamping some green. We'll see how that looks because I definitely want some leaves on there. I didn't think about it being on the um, paper like it was, but now they're not going to be. I can't do opposites on here. Is this the right way for my punch? Yep, it is. But I can, yes I can, can't I? I know somebody was screaming at me, Kelly, you can, you can. I just punched this out. Let's see, will it work this way? No, I can't. I was thinking I could then stamp it this way, but it, it, it won't work. 
So we're going to make do. Don't worry. We'll figure it out. It'll be fine. I'm going to stamp this right here. I need two leaves. There we go. There's my other one. Let's see if this looks better if we put this on here. Yeah, it does. You can see it better, right? I think I like that better. Eh. Do it like this. And I don't know. Oh, I don't like that at all. I hate it actually. Okay, so here we go. <laughs> Here's our little tulip. What are we gonna do with this? Well hang tight. I have some dark chocolate sea salt caramels. And these are Ghirardelli's. They fit in here perfectly. Does anybody see my take your pick tool? There it is. Here comes my little tool. I'm going to attach these into this little treat holder with mini glue dots. And now here comes my Ghirardelli. I thought I had some pink Ghirardelli's and I know there are pink Ghirardelli's. But I couldn't find them. So look at that. And then you're just going to tie this in a little single knot. You don't want it to be like, oops, that didn't go well. You don't want it to be really tight or hard to open. But this kind of stays in place. This ribbon is really nice like that. It stays in place. Then I did happen to make one with the paper and the leaves look better on the other side of the paper, right? So, and this also has Ghirardelli in it. And then I want to show you Bonnie's because this was so cute. She demonstrated this at our team meeting. Everybody got to see this. And she used the bee paper, which we don't have right now, and the bees. And then she punched a heart out of the middle of it and used the bee hive dye in the window. She said, you need to get milk chocolate caramel um, because the Ghirardelli packaging is the right color to put with this, right? Because it's gold. Now, how many of you buy candy based on the color of the packaging or the color of the candy? I do all the time. I'm like, oh my gosh, that's Bermuda Bay. I have to get that. I can do something with that. So yeah, I do that all the time. She also used the ruche ribbon here from the um, Birthday Bonanza suite. And how cute is that, right? So Bonnie Lesperance, thank you very much for demonstrating this. This one turned out pretty cute. Um, this one doesn't have any leaves, but I think it looks fine, right? Are you guys? It looks fine. I think somebody would be happy to get this. And, you know, it's a little treat favor. It's not as fancy as Bonnie's, but it's all about this chocolate for that, for this one, right? <laughs> all about the chocolate. So, now we have some really cool ideas to use with the... Timeless Tulips. Let me see, where'd that other card go that I made? Right here. This was, by the way, this was Jay Shante's card from my team. She designed that one. I just showed you guys how to make it. So we've got some really, really pretty, pretty projects here using the Timeless Tulips. All right, I'm going to flip you back to me. Hang tight. I almost raised my phone all the way so you could see how messy my office is, but I caught it just in time. <laughs> I don't want anybody to see that. I shouldn't say that. It's really not that bad right now. I kind of cleaned it up a little bit. Great for Mother's Day, too. You know, it certainly is. And, you know, if you're a demonstrator, I'm thinking about making up a bunch of these and putting them in the package when somebody asks me for a catalog. Because it's super quick and easy, and it's a nice little treat to get in with the catalog. And it's not going to cost me any extra to send it, because um, I have to ship my catalogs priority mail anyways. And they're in that um, cardboard priority mail envelope. So, yeah. Hi, Lana. You go back and watch the replay. You'll, you'll find it amusing. I messed up a whole bunch of stuff. But y you guys get it, right? Everything doesn't go perfect all the time. <laughs> Certainly not when I'm involved. That's a given. Yeah. So make sure you're leaving a comment 
Um, if you'd like to place an order, you can head over to my blog at stampabove.com. If you need any stamping supplies, I always appreciate your business. More than that, I appreciate your sharing this time with me. Um, I appreciate the thumbs up. I appreciate the share. Share the video. That means so much to me, but just spending time with you guys and having so many people here to share it with me, that means everything. Yay! Hi, Terry. Thank you so much. I see Terry's on here. Yeah, Jay says make some to hand out to the grocery store clerks. Just a little extra something for those people that are keeping our banks open, our post office, uh, like my mailman. I could make them a boy one. Um, the B one would be fine for a mailman if you happen to have this, right? Um, yeah, anybody who is going the extra mile to make sure that we still have all the conveniences that we have become so accustomed to, that's a good thing to do it. Yes, Diana, I do post these videos on YouTube. They're all on YouTube. I do load them up to YouTube, so don't worry about that. Ginny, you're so welcome. Thank you, Mary Ann. Thank you, Kathy. Um, make sure that you head over to my blog. You'll find still photos. You'll also find a complete shopping list of all the supplies that I used for these cards. I don't have it on there yet. I have to take pictures and I have to load that up um, yet when I'm done here. But first I need to eat because I'm really hungry. So, oh, Chris says she has Dutch and ancestry, so she loves the tulip bundle. I do too. And it's so easy to make pretty things with, right? It's just so easy to make the pretty things. I love it. All right, my stomach is growling at me. I have to let you go now. I'm hoping to see you guys around the same time tomorrow. Tomorrow's Friday. I don't know if I'll pop in earlier or later. Like I said, I'm going to try to get those kits done so that I can get them out in the mail. I would hate to see our mail shut down and everybody waiting for their welcome Easter kit. That would really make me sad. So we'll see what happens. I'll try to do that. I'll try to come on tomorrow. I'm, I'm sure I'll be able to figure out something. But it might not be till later or it might be earlier than today. So just watch. Thank you so much, Dee. I'm so happy to see you on here. Thank you for making such a beautiful card that I could share with everybody. Dee's on here and she was like the designer of the beautiful, beautiful tulip card. It's so pretty and I love, love, love the peek through window and all the extra effort you made or went through to make the inside look nice too, right? Like that's... That takes a lot of dedication. <laughs> yes, it does. All right, you guys, have a wonderful night. I will be back tomorrow. Um, stay healthy. Keep your sanity. Go stamp. Put a smile on your face. Make some cards for other people. Get them out in the mail to let people know you're thinking about them and you just want to spread a little joy. That's what we do. We spread joy. All right, you guys, bye-bye.